Welcome to this episode of our program Daily Debate. As usual, we will be discussing an important uh, debate. Today we'll be speaking about the oil and gas sector in Egypt, which has seen unprecedented uh, um, development during the past period, particularly in the sector of the gas or the, and the LNG and uh, all this process. Uh, uh, during the past period, Egypt has seen lots of uh, breakthroughs uh, through the uh, uh, developmental projects that were made by Egypt uh, in order to prepare for uh, this sector to flourish and at the same time encourage uh, world partners to uh, work with uh, the uh, Egyptian side. We'll be speaking about that in our episode tonight. We'll be speaking about the latest uh, agreements that were signed and uh, the significance of that. We'll be also speaking about Egypt's transformation into green and uh, the development also in this uh, very particular issue. We'll be speaking uh, about that with our distinguished guest engineer Salah Hafiz, expert in oil and gas sector. Thank you so much for Thank being you. with us tonight. Thank you. Before we delve into our discussion, let's first have a quick look on in the top stories of the day. And President Fatah Sisi gave his directives to implement several projects aimed at protecting beaches of the northern coast cities, especially Alexandria, in accordance with engineering and environmental standards. During his meeting with a number of concerned officials, President Sisi also instructed to follow up special studies to face the beach's erosion and preserve the safety and investments of coastal urban communities. The head of state was briefed on development of projects of, in Alexandria and the northern coast. The meeting also tackled the private sector's future projects and investments within the framework of upgrading and protecting beaches ranging from Abu Qir till the west of the north coast. Before I move on with our discussion to our topic tonight, uh, let me first have this quick report on Egypt. Chevron signed Memorandum of Understanding over East Mediterranean Natural Gas Transfer. Let's watch. The Egyptian natural gas holding company E-Gas and U.S. energy giant Chevron signed in Cairo on Monday a Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, on the transport, import, liquefaction, and export of gas from the East Mediterranean to Egypt. The Ministry of Petroleum and Mineral Resources said in a statement that the MOU signed by Magdi Galel, the head of E-Gas, and Jeff Ewing, Chiverson East Mediterranean Managing Director, aim to develop the needed infrastructure to transport the available natural gas from the East Mediterranean to Egypt. EGAS and Chevron also agreed to form a negotiation committee to allow all parties to agree on future projects in this regard, as well as to conduct studies on producing low-carbon liquefied natural gas, LNG. The signing of the MOU came after months of talks that started in March. For his part, Rith revealed that Chevron plans to drill the first exploration well in its concession area in the eastern Mediterranean in September. He added that his company's activity in the field of marketing through its oil factory in the 6th of October city can contribute in meeting the local market's needs as well as Africa's, given that Egypt is a base for exporting oils to the rest of Africa. He also pointed to the possibility of Chevron's participation in the investment opportunities available in the field of petrochemicals. Furthermore, Rith said the U.S. energy giant was ready to play an active role in the U.N. Conference of Parties on Climate Change COP27 that will be held in Sharm el-Sheikh this November to cooperate in projects to improve the environmental conditions of the energy industry. Earlier, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi also met with Wirth and asserted Egypt's full support for Chevron's activities, adding that its vast expertise in the oil and gas industry worldwide can support 
the oil sector in Egypt and contribute to maximizing the benefit from the state's resources for current and coming generations. The president also affirmed the depth of cooperation and strategic ties between Egypt and the U.S. in all fields. Rith, on his part, underlined the regional cooperation projects that are currently underway to transfer and liquefy natural gas, highlighting its importance in view of the current world energy crisis. Well, welcome back and uh, back to you, Engineer Hafez. And uh, this is another uh, story of success. We're speaking about the gas sector because, or the energy sector at, uh, at large, because Egypt has been preparing for, uh, for that stage and even for the upcoming one. Let me first start with the report we have just seen and the U.S. energy giant Chevron signs memorandum of understanding with uh, the e, uh, e, uh, the, the e gas. Mm -hmm. Well, the e uh, lately the American companies, they're all uh, giants. Uh, Chevron was one of the famous seven sisters that uh, developed uh, this sector quite uh, uh, aggressively. Uh, uh, so t to come back again and work in Egypt, this is a very important step uh, forward. But the main reason the, the changes are occurring now in, in this sector, because the map is being changed completely, not only in this area, but the whole world. If uh, uh, Europe starts, well, the gas will remain uh, in demand for, some, for, for years to come. Unlike oil and coal, they're phasing out of oil and coal because of uh, their high uh, emission of carbon dioxide and getting more into gas, although it's not really the best thing to do because of uh, the carbon dioxide they emit, they still emit, but as a transitional phase uh, to eventually uh, go completely green and, and uh, uh, drop the gas. But now the, the need for gas is pressing and the map is changing. If uh, Russia, which is contiguous to the European market, will stop uh, providing the gas, they will have to be taken elsewhere. So uh, the other countries that will be getting their gas from perhaps uh, Australia or Venezuela or uh, uh, Indonesia, they will, th this gas will come to this part of the world. So the gas will, uh, will uh, by, by, by mere uh, the, the cost of logistics, will go in the price high, so Egypt will have a very important role to, to do. So now all companies, all investors are coming into Egypt and looking for gas, uh, and, 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 and uh, Egypt is changing into uh, an energy hub, not only gas hub, but energy hub. And this will, will, uh, will have very vibrant uh, uh, changes uh, in the area. So we're doing it very well, very aggressively, and, and uh, it will work very soon uh, uh, to the benefit of Egypt. What you just said sir, has opened to me three different topics. <laughs> and if we speak about each one, we'll speak for, for, for many hours. Mm -hmm. First, the transformation into uh, green. And part of what Egypt uh, signed or, or, or um, uh, did the discussion with the Chevron port was uh, to uh, or rather future projects with regard to uh, studies on producing low carbon uh, liquefied natural gas, the uh, low carbon LNG. That is part of Egypt's other effort for green transformation. We'll come to that in, in, in a while. But also you spoke about two important issues, the change of the world map new alliances, new dependence, uh, importance to uh, very particular uh, areas. One of them is the gas and how this gas is really changing the map of the world. From your point of view, how do you view the partnership between Europe and the Mediterranean and uh, definitely Egypt? in between and how would that benefit 
the European side from one side and the North African countries at the other? Well, uh, usually time is of the essence, always in problem. And because of the war in Ukraine, uh, it expedited the, 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 the investment in the area and the fast investment in the area. There were plans to uh, address the, the needs and demands in this area by, for instance, building a pipeline from, uh, from Israel to uh, Crete and, and then to Europe. Uh, and uh, projects like this, will uh, the cost is high. Also, the liquefaction plants, the LNG, is, the cost is high. So they, they have to move more uh, hastily and more quickly to uh, deal with the changes that are being occurred every day. Nobody knows the, the end result of the war and when it will finish or what, uh, whatever. Uh, it's, it's still, it, they're all in limbo. So changes are made uh, very quickly to, to address the immediate uh, problem, which helps Egypt in, in this respect. So uh, now, the, the, as I said, the hub is, uh, is developing. Uh, the fact that, uh, uh, well, I've, I'm repeating myself actually, but company investors are coming to Egypt because the largest market is in Europe and Europe will change clients. Uh, so we'll have, uh, uh, there will be room for more gas to be found and more uh, exporting facilities or uh, that's why uh, the, the energy and, and the location, geographic location of Egypt is between, uh, and, and Europe is very interested in decarbonizing Africa. Uh, and decarbonizing Africa will require more work, more investment, more uh, stakeholders in the area to help uh, Europe because they're using gas, they're polluting the environment as far as the carbon, uh, the carbon dioxide, the uh, greenhouse gases. So they, are, uh, they, they feel guilty for that and, and they want to, to develop the green hydrogen. And so the timing is, is ideal and uh, the, 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 the motion, the, the, uh, all the world is, is wor working in one direction and that's why all um, countries are uh, uh, diligently addressing this issue now. What, what we're speaking about um, energy, preparing to be an energy hub, as you respectively here said, we have to say that Egypt has uh, exerted great efforts in order to prepare for, for this. If you may tell us or elab further elaborate on the stages Egypt has been through in order to prepare for uh, such um, for such a time or for such a stage? Uh, well, e Egypt is the oldest uh, oil company in, in, in the area. We've discovered oil uh, 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 earlier than uh, what uh, Saudi did or other countries in, in the area. And uh, long before Israel and other East Mediterranean started exploration in the area. So Egypt was uh, building mm. the infrastructure in uh, not only, uh, that's why we have uh, a set of uh, uh, pipelines or uh, a grid of pipelines that does not exist anywhere else. We have uh, LNG uh, 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 more, more than any other country uh, in the area. So we were preparing ourselves and that's why we, uh, we, we took the chance uh, and, and pursued it. Uh, uh, the, the problem is you cannot plan for petroleum to develop it like industry, for instance. You check the market and you, uh, the technology and start the industry and find uh, a way to, uh, to, uh, to uh, market your products. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it very much depends on the geopolitics uh, of the area. So you can go one, one way and then the whole thing changes and make you uh, either uh, yeah. lose or, or go another way. So uh, fortunately, things work to our, to our favor. When we speak about this area of the Mediterranean, we're not just speaking about Egypt, but we're speaking also about Algeria, because Egypt and Algeria both 
uh, are considered by the other side of uh, the Mediterranean as upcoming strategic partners uh, in the uh, gas to clean uh, transition. Uh, how important, not just uh, uh, this issue, but also the collaboration between Egypt and Algeria on the other hand? Well, they are partners, actually. They're not opponents. No, 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 never. Yeah, of yes, course. Definitely. Yeah. So that's why, uh, because we, were, we, we are still in, in the game, but Russia is out, for instance, and uh, other countries are uh, uh, Russia uh, cannot be out because we're speaking about four. Uh, cannot uh, be out. Four billion. But they yeah. And they are speaking about one hundred eighty-five billions. And uh, sanctions and and uh, uh, it's a big problem, you know. And and we have to realize and appreciate that the food uh, supply is related to energy. Yes. Definitely. Uh, because if the fertilizers, for instance, is made from uh, uh, petroleum uh, products, yes. like uh, it's a chain. Yeah, Not it's chains. it's a chain, and the sanctions, you know, the financial uh, uh, sanctions can affect uh, the the energy sanctions can affect this. It's it's a uh, it's a series of uh, of uh, 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 chains or, or linked changes, all together. Uh, yeah, and repercussions. Uh, so, uh, back to Algeria. Algeria has always been uh, a, a big producer of gas. And uh, lately, by the way, they, they, they wanted, they have problem with Morocco. And this is because of gas. The gas, Morocco is offered to get the gas from uh, Nigeria, because they have a lot of gas, through uh, Morocco to Europe. So this will affect the supply of, uh, so it's all geopolitics uh, play there. But for Egypt, uh, Algeria is a partner. Uh, they will not. We're not taking from their share, yeah, because they all they all fight for a, a, sh a share. Egypt is looking for a bigger share, and the bigger share will inevitably come from uh, the drop that will occur between uh, the trade relation with Russia. So, uh, and it's not it's not constant. Uh, neither uh, uh, it's dynamic, but not not constant positively or negatively, you know, it changes. So we have to have fallback positions all the time to deal with it. But the East Mediterranean uh, uh, at large uh, will be a very vibrant area for, for gas and Egypt will lead uh, the, the game there. Yes, and we'll speak about the uh, Mediterranean Gas Forum because it's, it's a very important forum that will have crucial role. But before uh, we continue on with uh, this uh, discussion, let me uh, take this second report. Will Egypt's gas help mitigating the world energy crisis? Let's watch. Egypt, the European Union and Israel last week signed a Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, to export Israeli liquefied natural gas to Europe via Egypt. The signing of the MOU took place on the sidelines of the seventh ministerial meeting of the East Mediterranean Gas Forum in Cairo with the participation of Minister of Petroleum Tariq Al Mullah, President of the European Commission Arzola von der Leyen, Israeli Minister of Energy Karin Al Harar, and EU Commissioner for Energy and Climate. Europe has been seeking to meet part of its gas needs through supplies from the Eastern Mediterranean as part of a plan to compensate for part of its Russian gas imports. The gas export deal is a commitment to share natural gas with Europe and help it diversify its energy sources. It will last for three years with an automatic two-year extension. Simpson praised the infrastructure for the gas industry that Egypt enjoys saying it would contribute positively to strengthening and supporting cooperation between Egypt and the EU in various natural gas activities. She also praised the advanced technologies in use in the Zohr field, the largest natural gas field in the country, and Egypt's ability to operate one of the most important discoveries made in the Eastern Mediterranean region. 
The agreement came in the light of Europe's efforts to secure its energy needs at a time when Russia has already begun to reduce gas supplies to Germany by 40% and to pump 100 million cubic meters of gas per day instead of the previous 160 million cubic meters through the Nord Stream pipeline. al Mulla said that Egypt's agreement to export gas to Europe was permanent. He explained that Egypt exports about 500 million cubic feet of gas per day to Europe in the summer, while this quantity exceeds 1 billion cubic feet in winter. Egypt is seeking to become a regional energy hub by exporting its surplus natural gas production, as well as the surplus gas production of neighboring countries to Europe through two liquefaction stations located on the Mediterranean in Ippo and Miata. Egypt has become a major player in the global gas market and has maintained its production and export levels of natural gas despite the COVID-19 pandemic and its repercussions. According to the Ministry of Petroleum and Mineral Resources, the volume of Egypt's gas production in 2020-2021 reached 66.2 billion cubic meters. Consumption reached 62.9 billion cubic meters, while the surplus was 3.3 billion cubic meters. The forum includes seven members, Egypt, Greece, Cyprus, Palestine, Israel, Jordan, and Italy. France later joined them, and the US, EU, and World Bank joined as observers. The forum is an umbrella group for cooperation and regional integration to exploit the abandoned gas resources of the Eastern Mediterranean for the maximum benefit of the countries of the region. Right, back to you, Engineer Hafiz. And um, we were speaking about the Mediterranean Gas Forum. I guess what the report we have just seen would further add to this uh, forum, which has been initiated as part of Egyptian also great forum to initiate this or to help in the initiation of this forum. Mm -hmm. um, um, how do you view the importance of this uh, forum at this upcoming stage, what or the report that we have just seen uh, mm -hmm. one minute ago, and how do you read this scene? I will com uh, comment on uh, the official declaration that Egypt will get the gas from Israel and uh, re-exports. This is very important and the timing is ideal because well this means that Israel will uh, postpone or or overlook building a pipeline straight to Europe and they have a lot of uh, gas to export uh, this is one thing the other thing if they if we say that we will take their gas and export the other agreements the old agreements uh, they say th that we will import gas for the local use because there is nothing like uh, uh, this. No look, because they will come into the grid and then you, it will be exported from different point in the grid. But they, may, they made it like this. So if we export to Lebanon, which is a national thing that we are, have been uh, working on for some time, uh, it, will, it will be seen from Hezbollah. So we, we couldn't preempt Hezbollah at that time. They were controlling everything in Lebanon. So this is an indication that Hezbollah is slowing down the control. Uh, this is the way I see it. This is my interpretation. And so this is very because important. Because we are already sending to Lebanon, by the way. Because we sent to Lebanon <laughs> before this declaration. Agreement. Yeah, before. The old agreements were that we're, uh, we're, we were exporting, uh, importing the gas from Israel for local consumption. And some people, they commented, but it was meant to be, you know, to, to be able to, to do the. So this is a very geolithic. Uh, uh, to, Lebanon, to Lebanon, it will be via Syria. 
So. Yeah, and via Syria was also difficult because the sanctions on Syria. So we had to get special permission, or they have to get special permission from the United States to exclude Syria from uh, having the gas going through uh, Syria because of uh, the sanctions. So this is a geopolitical game that really helps uh, uh, the, 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 the dynamics of, uh, of the gas up in Egypt. <laughs> you said it, uh, uh, the, the whole map is being changed and uh, lots of issues are being definitely changing. Um, in 2018, we started saying that we have self-sufficiency of energy, thank God, and we are moving towards uh, starting with the issue of the regional hub, starting with exporting, starting with many of the projects and infrastructure that were made in order to start with exporting and then turn into a hub. What I meant here was um, we're, we're speaking here about how we, we in Egypt can be beneficial for Africa in terms of how would or, 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 or how would we be also sending to Africa how are we putting Africa in our uh, plans? Well, to be self-sufficient in energy, we are, we are now net importer of uh, liquid hydrocarbons, liquid uh, oil. Uh, we, we are net exporter of gas. We are starting to become net exporter of, uh, not starter, we've been doing it for some time, but more so in the future of electricity. To, uh, to, to Europe, start Europe and Africa, Sudan and uh, the, so uh, the, now we, ha we are net importer in certain uh, products and net exporter in other products of energy. But the, 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 our vision that we will go more into uh, renewable energy and with renewable energy we will manufacture more and more uh, hyd uh, uh, green hydrogen. And green hydrogen is an energy now for the first time is being used uh, quite uh, uh, rapidly in transportation. It was used, uh, uh, hydrogen was used in refineries, uh, refineries mm. to, uh, to remove uh, uh, sulfur from uh, products and in fertilizers, of course, and other industries as a reduction uh, chemical, uh, in other chemical industries. But this was costing a lot of uh, emission of carbon dioxide because in refineries you do process uh, called uh, uh, steam, uh, gasification, uh, steam gasification or uh, re uh, reforming and uh, this is, and then you produce uh, energy. So producing was taking, uh, hydrogen was taking 6% of the uh, gas produced in the whole world. China, of course, was leading this, uh, uh, the, the, the production. So now Egypt is getting into this. And uh, hydrogen, if you mix it with, with gas, you increase the calorific value, and hence you will reduce the carbon dioxide of the, the same quantity uh, you burn from the gas. So all these factors will make us import less uh, 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 hydro, uh, liquid hydrocarbon. We are signing agreements to produce more gas and electricity uh, renewables. We're going changing from what we have now to 40% by the year 2035, mm. uh, uh, which is quite a development in this area. So in energy, we will be not only self-sufficient uh, in, in everything, but also net e exporter uh, of energy. So this is how the hub will be uh, uh, developed. And we're doing a, a very good job in, in developing all these uh, uh, projects simultaneously. Which is reshaping Egypt's role 
or yeah. Egypt's position so worldwide. So Egypt will have very important role in the energy in this part of the world. Yes, indeed. Here we have to say that the uh, Ministry of uh, Petroleum and uh, Mineral Resources also uh, pays uh, great attention to petrochemical projects. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, why is that and how is that evident? Well, ga gas is always related to uh, petrochemicals. Uh, uh, eth ethylene and uh, propane. Okay. So, uh, in, in other words, or, or, or to just clarify more my question, how would that be an added value to this uh, sector and added value to Egypt? The, 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 the value of oil or gas as produced is one thing. Any, if you move the gas, then you add value to it. If you uh, uh, industrialize the gas, you add value to it. So eventually adding value, meaning that you're, you're adding to the, the deficits of energy, because either you add, the, uh, add a value in money. So anything, any processing, any uh, petrochemicals, anything you do, to the primary energy, as it were, mm. to, to develop it and add value to it, helps the formula of being sufficient in energy, because the added value you can use to, uh, to get uh, uh, energy. As long as you add the value locally, then it's as if you're in, uh, improving the formula of uh, uh, energy, so you're, not, uh, you're producing more energy if you add value. Uh, so petrochemical is a very important uh, uh, sector, and we have the ingredients and the, the feedstock for, for it. So uh, it's a very, very positive step toward uh, uh, developing the energy sector. Uh. We come to a very important or another important topic, and uh, as Egypt uh, is um, just few months bef uh, before uh, um, hosting the COP27 and uh, has been leading the process of transformation into green since a while, speaking of definitely Egypt. And uh, as we have seen in the first report that Egypt has conducted with uh, Chevron uh, to study how to uh, produce the uh, low carbon uh, LNG. How do you view that? How important is that at this upcoming phase? How would that help Egypt get along with what is required world worldwide? Well, the, the, the low carbon uh, uh, LNG, well, I, I see it, uh, you know, the process itself is energy mm. intensive. So how you to, to process it and to liquefy uh, uh, without, uh, uh, w of course, with extra cost, but w with less, uh, 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 carbon and, and losses. Uh, the other thing is uh, the, the green hydrogen again comes into the formula because uh, mixing uh, green hydrogen uh, to, the, to, to the gas you can compress and export and it will be uh, less in carbon so it's a combination, it's a mixture of, of uh, uh, some products or technology added to the uh, liqui li liquefaction uh, in order to make it uh, uh, less uh, carbon uh, emitting. Mm. So uh, this is the, the, the footprint of every, uh, all processes have foot, certain footprint. Mm. So to improve the footprint, uh, the carbon footprint, I mean, carbon footprint. So to improve the carbon in, in doing so, especially with the event coming, the forthcoming event of COP27, uh, this will, uh, so Egypt, uh, to prove uh, that Egypt is playing important role, uh, not only uh, locally, but also nationally to, uh, to, uh, for Africa. Mm -hmm. This will help Africa uh, being uh, considered as uh, uh, an active player in, in decarbonizing the world. Finally, sir, and I have only one minute uh, left for me, what is the role of the work partners or what do we need from the work partners? Uh, we need all the help, you know, to, to evolve synergy uh, between what we're doing, you know, there's, uh, there's no, no time for, uh, uh, for opponency or no time for, for uh, debates. 
we have to all work together and I see the electricity and the petroleum sector mm -hmm. and the environment work in, in beautiful pace uh, together uh, preparing you know they, they, they're all interrelated uh, issues so uh, this uh, synergy is uh, helping very much the energy hub and the COP27 and uh, the decarbonization that we're diligently working on uh, in Africa and trying to help Europe decarbonize Africa uh, technologically and uh, uh, actively. Indeed. I guess that takes us to the end of this episode since I, they told me I have no uh, other time. Engineer Salah Hafiz, expert in oil and gas sector, we thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank and you. We always have the pleasure of having you and of, of your input. Thank you. Thank you. Dear viewers, many thanks for watching. Next uh, debate would be on Sunday with another colleague. Until then, it's good night.